Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. Matthew chapter 27. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, It's against the law to put this into the treasury since it's blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That's why it has been called the field of blood to this very day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? for he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I've suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It's your responsibility. All of the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus to the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of Jesus and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you're the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, 
but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I'm the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge, and he filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, No, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that very moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were suddenly raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them there were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, After three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he's been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Go ahead, take a guard, answered Pilate. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. Jesus was condemned by the very Jewish religious leadership that should have recognized him and proclaimed him as the Messiah and the Son of God. But verse 1 says, Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. It may have been for jealousy. It may have been for misunderstanding. We don't know their motivation. What we do know is that they incited the people and they incited the Roman civil authorities to have Jesus executed. And so Judas had betrayed Jesus previously. He was feeling remorseful in this chapter, and he went back to the temple, and he threw the money into the temple. He tried to return it. They wouldn't receive the money. So he went away, and he hanged himself. It's a very sad end to a follower of Jesus. Jesus is brought before Pilate, who finds no fault in him, and Pilate tries to find a way to let Jesus go. And he remembers that they have a tradition that on the Passover, he can let one prisoner go. And so he asked the crowd to choose between a man named Jesus Barabbas and Jesus, the one who was called the Messiah. Verse 17, so when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? Because he knew it was out of self-interest they had handed Jesus over to him. Pilate was aware that Jesus had committed no crimes, but the religious leaders were jealous of him. But ultimately, Pilate has to condemn Jesus to death. Verse 24, when Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, instead the uproar was starting. He took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. He said, I'm innocent of this man's blood. He said, it's your responsibility. And all the people answered, his blood is on us and our children. Friends, that's a prophetic decree. That is exactly what heaven intended, that the blood of Jesus would be on the Jewish people, not to condemn them, but to save them 
not to cause them shame for the execution of Jesus, but to bring them eternal life. And so, in so saying, his blood be on us and our children, they were actually making a prophetic decree unbeknownst to themselves that was in alignment with the will of God for them. Jesus died a sacrificial atoning death. He cried out with a loud voice. He gave up his spirit. In that very moment, the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Since that time, the holiest place of all has been opened because of the sacrificial atoning death of Jesus Christ. And the centurion and those with him recognized that the death of Jesus was not a normal death. They proclaimed, surely he was the Son of God. The burial of Jesus A man named Joseph of Arimathea, who we believe to have been a member of the Sanhedrin, went to Pilate and asked for his body and put it in Joseph's own new tomb. And so we leave this chapter. Jesus has been literally crucified. He has literally died. His spirit has left his body. He's been buried. This was not a a symbolic act where nothing really happened. He was the Son of God. But he died, not for his sins, but for the sin of mankind, both for the Jewish people and the Gentile nations of the earth. He died for my sins and your sins, because he had none of his own. And so Pilate, even though he recognized that Jesus was not a lawbreaker, he executed him because he was afraid of what the people would say. And so, friends, I have to ask you today, are you afraid to be named as a follower of Jesus Christ? This Joseph of Arimathea went to Pilate the day Jesus died and asked for his body. Joseph was identifying himself as someone who revered Jesus. Could have been at the cost of his own life, but Joseph bravely went and requested Jesus' body so that he could bury him. What have you done for Jesus? What have I done for Jesus? Who have you told that you love Jesus, that you're a follower of Jesus? How have you lived a life worthy of Jesus dying for? These are important questions. Lord, I just proclaim you to be the Lord and Savior of Israel, the Lord and Savior of all mankind, and my Lord and Savior. I love you, Lord, and I thank you for saving me, and I thank you for saving those who are listening today. We bless you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.